What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today I got my hands on the brand new flirt case for the Raspberry Pi 4 and we're going to do some testing with this thing. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've always recommended the flirt case from the Raspberry Pi 2 on up and finally we got one for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now these are available for pre-order over on Flirk's website. I will leave a link in the description. For the version I have here, the regular silver version is $15.95 and they also offer the Black Cody Edition for the same exact price. I also have the Black Cody Edition on the way. Personally, that's the one I wish I got first, but right now we got the silver one in hand, so we're gonna do some testing with it. If you're not familiar with the Flirt case, basically what we have here is a full aluminum Raspberry Pi 4 case, or you can buy it for the Raspberry Pi 3 or 3B+. We have easy access to all the ports on the Raspberry Pi, including the SD card, and we can even see the status LEDs flashing when the Raspberry Pi is on. But the main draw to this case, at least for me, is the whole case itself acts as a heatsink. When you place the Raspberry Pi inside of the case, it's going to make contact with the CPU, and the whole case itself acts as an aluminum heatsink. So we don't have to worry about active cooling, loud fans, replacing fans, or extra power draw. So the flirt case protects the Raspberry Pi, keeps it cool, and it also looks really, really nice. Assembly of the case is very easy. You're going to get your four screws for holding the Raspberry Pi inside of the case, plus a thermal pad. Now this is going to go on the CPU and make contact with the case to help transfer heat from the SOC to the case itself. So we're gonna grab the Raspberry Pi 4 and we're also gonna take the thermal pad that's included. Now you could use thermal grease or thermal paste if you want to, but I've always had really good luck with these. Both sides of the pad do have plastic backing on them, so make sure you get that off. We're gonna place the pad right on the Raspberry Pi's CPU. And then we're gonna turn the Raspberry Pi over. We're gonna line up our HDMI ports, power, and 3.5 millimeter audio jack and drop it right inside of the case. Now we're going to make sure we have the bottom of the case facing the SD card slot, put our four screws in, tighten them up, and you're good to go. You do not have to torque these screws down really tight, just make sure they're snug. Like I mentioned, we do have full access to the SD card, so we can slide it right in and out. You can change images anytime you want to. And there we have it, the Raspberry Pi 4 is in the new Flirt case and it looks really good. Easy access to all the external ports on the Raspberry Pi, and if you need GPIO access, you can actually use a ribbon cable and it comes right out of the bottom. And the status LEDs on the Raspberry Pi are visible. Now it's time to see how well the Flirt case cools the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to be facing this off against a few different heat sinks that I've been testing over the last few weeks. First up, we have the stock Raspberry Pi 4 with no heat sink. Then, a 20mm aluminum heat sink. A 20mm aluminum heat sink with a 40mm fan. The iUniker heat sink fan combo that you can get for around $10 on eBay. And finally, the king of Raspberry Pi coolers, the Ice Tower. I've tested this with the fan on and the fan off. We're going to face off against all of these with the new Flirt case for the Raspberry Pi 4. But before we get to the results, I want to give you a quick rundown on my testing method. I'm running the same exact Raspberry Pi with each of these coolers. I'm using the same exact SD card, power supply, HDMI, and it's sitting in the same exact location inside of my room. And I'm running Raspbian and Buster. The first test is the idle test. I cold boot each one of these and I let it sit for five minutes. I record the temperature. I have it on screen along with the frequency. And in the background, I also have a log running. So it'll give me a temperature readout every 30 seconds and log it for me so I know exactly what the temp was at the exact time. Next, I open up the Chromium browser, run a YouTube 720p video for five minutes in window mode. Then, I extract a Raspbian Buster image, which is 1.1 gigabytes, and finally, onto the extreme test, totally maxing out all four cores for 20 minutes straight. Like I said, I get a reading every 30 seconds, so I know exactly what the temp is at any given time. Now, if you're not familiar how the frequency works with the new Raspberry Pi 4, when it hits 80 degrees Celsius, the CPU underclocks itself to 600 megahertz. Our stock clock is 1.5 gigahertz, so underclocking to 600 really takes a lot of performance out of this little chip. So basically, as long as we can keep the temp of the CPU under 80 degrees Celsius, we're good to go with the Raspberry Pi 4. And it'll run like that all day long. 
I like to keep mine around 70 degrees or lower if possible, and we're going to see if this flirt case can do that. So I'm finished with my testing. Here we have the idle temperature. My ambient room temperature is 23.333 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Keep in mind that all of the temperature readings are in Celsius. With no heat sink, idle, 54 degrees Celsius. The 20 millimeter aluminum heat sink, 49 degrees Celsius. The 20 millimeter heat sink with a 40 millimeter fan, 36. The iUniker heat sink from eBay, 36. And the flirt case for the Raspberry Pi 4 kept up with that at 36 degrees Celsius. Now going into this, I was pretty sure that the ice tower with the fan off and on was going to be everything because it's a massive cooler. But if we take a look here, the flirt case is actually doing a great job for being a passively cooled heatsink. And finally, the extreme test. Most Raspberry Pis out in the wild will never see this much action. 20 minutes, all four cores maxed out. With no heat sink, we hit that thermal throttle limit of 80 degrees Celsius in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. With the 20 millimeter heat sink and no fan, we hit 80 degrees Celsius in 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And this actually surprised me, but the flirt case actually beat out the 20 millimeter heat sink with the 40 millimeter fan by 7 degrees Celsius. After 20 minutes, we were only at 60C with the flirt case, so it's definitely doing a good job. And like I mentioned, we don't have to deal with any fans, any noise, or any extra power draw using the flirt case. And by the way, yes, the iUniker heatsink fan combo and the ice tower beat out the flirt case, but there's going to be no performance increase going from 60 degrees Celsius to 57 or even 42 degrees Celsius. The actively cooled heat sinks may give you a little more headroom when overclocking, but overall, I think the Flirt case is doing an amazing job and it's well worth the money. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I absolutely love the Flirt case. Like I mentioned, I've been using one since the Raspberry Pi 2 and I highly recommend it. Links for everything I mentioned will be in the description. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.